Hello and welcome to Voices of Sup. In this episode, we are speaking to Donalu Nixon, also known as Mother Supper. Hello, everybody. My name is Bo from Travel with a Paddle. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. I really hope that you do find it quite inspirational and that you do learn a few things along the way as well. Mother Supper is an expedition sup paddler. And yes, caveat, she is my mum. Uh, but I just feel like she's a great person to speak to about expedition paddling. This video really just introducing her, her background, who she is, how she got into stand up paddle boarding, some of the adventures she has done. We did film this video toward the end of 2022, but it's definitely still relevant today. And I hope that you really enjoy. Let's throw it over to the interview now. So first off, can you introduce yourself, please? I'm your mother, Donna Lou Nixon. <laughs> um, I'm 61 years old. I've got a wonderful husband of 43 years, Mark. I've got a son and a lovely daughter, Amy. And that's about it. Can you tell us a little bit about how long you've been paddling for? Oh, probably. 15 years? Yeah, probably 15 years. You probably know more than me. <laughs> uh, we started with when you were doing Do Not Follow, which was great. Yeah, and I was on the camera. But I did, uh, you did a lot of um, adventure um, clips like Getaway, and I was on the camera, and I learned a lot from you. I learned a lot from you. Yeah, heaps. A lot in terms of? In terms of water, ebbs, um, flows, um, eddies, currents, yeah. You didn't think I was listening, but I was. Ah, oh, you were listening. Yeah. I guess that, that all led into what you're doing today. Oh, but, definitely. But let's go back a bit more. And how did you, I mean, you got in, you first got into stand-up paddling through me and yeah. filming me and all of that. Uh, what was your draw card to stand-up paddling? Why did you want to get involved with it? Or what kind of, what grabbed you to, to give it a go? Oh, it's just at the Tony Expedition and it's, it's the escape, pure escape. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, the bottom line is 20 years ago I was given 12 months to live and they said go home and you've got leukemia, go home and that's it. And I sat in the lounge for three months and felt sorry for myself. Then I woke up one day and I thought, oh, I don't feel too bad. So I went out and bought a little business and I turned that into a really big business and I had that for 20 years. But during that 20 years I got really sick with three other major cancers. I had um, bowel cancer with um, a colostomy bag and then I had um, throat cancer, so I got the sexy voice and with a feeding tube and I couldn't talk and eat and anything and I had melanoma, 50 stitches. But So while I was really, really sick in a hospital bed at home for months and months and months, everyone did everything for me, which I really appreciate, but it also I'm very independent. So now when I do the paddles, I do solo no uh, unassisted no help i don't want anyone to help me because i just want to be solely responsible for myself which is great for getting back my strength so when i was sick i planned i thought i wonder if you could get a fold-up bike on a 14 foot inflatable board so as i'm in my, my sick bed at home i'd crawl down at the garage measure the board get online find out how big the bike was measure 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 way 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 it was really good for my brain and I mapped out about 10 different paddles and um, which is Murrumbidgee, New Zealand, Australia, uh, a lot in Australia and the last one was Norway which um, was a really big pinnacle because it was overseas, it was different and um, it was really a big thing. So I had all these, after I got better I had all these um, paddles mapped out and planned out and I bought the Rompton fold up bike and I had the 14 foot board and I just had everything ready and I just took off one day. It was the best feeling ever. <laughs> That's great. Thanks for sharing all of that. Yeah. I know it might be tough to share. I, yeah, yeah, I didn't tell anyone at the time, so yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. Good. So yeah, good. thanks for sharing that. And yeah. Good to get your strength back. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. I don't even, I didn't tell you or anything. I didn't tell anyone. <laughs> yeah, we, didn't, we didn't know anything at that, at no that point. Knew. Yeah. Yeah, no one knew at that time. Um, but yeah, thanks for sharing that. And it seems like stand-up paddle was your gateway to escaping and getting better and getting oh. your mental health back and your physical health back and oh. everything like that. Got everything back, everything. And now, it, yeah, yeah, it's really good. Yeah. Amazing. To be independent, strong, um, conquering, yeah, it's good. 
and you listed off a few of those expeditions that you mapped out. Can you yeah. just elaborate a bit more on those experiences, what you've actually completed in the last kind of what, 10 years? Um, so, um, well, the Brompton bike was a beauty because um, I were left, we lived on the lake at home and we are surrounded by lots of waterways, lots of waterways. So I travelled, I think it was 400 kilometres up the coast, but I went from, I paddled the lake and then I'd get off, deflate the board, get unfold the bike, put it in the trailer and cycle to the next lake. So I just go lake, cycle, lake, cycle, lake, cycle. And it took me 13 days to go 400 k's up the coast and I caught a train home. So it was really good, really, really good. You've got the inflatable board, the pack-up bike. You can kind of go anywhere with that, can't yeah. you? Yeah. In train, buses, flights. Anywhere. 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 And the, um, oh, what is it, the Radical Design trailer, perfect. The wheels pop off. It's the best, best um, trailer ever. And it hooks onto the Brompton. And it turns into a um, check-in bag. The wheels come off, and it's been that's been on every adventure. That's one of my really good um, pieces of equipment, and it's in really good nick still. Yeah, New Zealand was 250 k's down the Fanganui River, which was Grade One rapids, and in the first oh, three kilometres, both fins popped out because they were popping fins. The current popped them out, and so I did the whole 250 kilometres without a fin. So that was real fun. Capsized a couple of times. I loved it. That was that's a really good, um, really good paddle. Really good because you're going through a national park and you're camping with your tent and everything. Yeah, it's really good. And uh, Murrumbidgee, that was tough because it was so hot. It was 43 degrees days with snakes in the water. A couple of brown snakes, a black snake. Um, it had a bit of a flow on it. So I did 600 kilometres in 17 days I think it was but that really the the sides of the uh, river were just mud and cow poo and it was tough it was really and hot so hot and not a person for miles so but it was it was good yeah good to test yourself <laughs> uh, Norway was you've been to Norway twice now yeah for a couple of different yeah. expeditions yeah how how was that and and what what made you pick Norway? So Norway was the big one. It was overseas and it was first time and um, really a really good test. And that place is just absolutely beautiful. It's so good for everything. It's just beautiful. And I mapped it all out. I remember the I did 100 kilometres, 120 kilometres the first trip. And um, I remember the last day when I was just on that in the fjord and it was just glass and I could see my reflection and I just looked up no one around and I just cried I just cried because I thought oh, done it <laughs> done it <laughs> yeah just so happy yeah beautiful it's amazing that stand-up paddleboarding allows us to do these incredible and have these incredible experiences yeah. you can take yourself off into the absolute middle of nowhere and you realize that you know you could be the most beautiful place on earth it might be yeah. It might be crazy weather, but you know you you have these different experiences that a lot of other people wouldn't necessarily yeah. get to get to experience. Yeah, and people say, oh, "Aren't you scared by yourself? Aren't you worried?" And after cancer, you're not scared of anything. <laughs> Nothing scares you. No. Nothing. And if someone wants an old bird like me, well, <laughs> good luck to them. <laughs> so, what's been one of your highlights on these adventures? Highlights of people you meet. Oh, my God, I love people. Oh. Yeah, she loves people. Yeah, I love people. <laughs> <laughs> love people a lot. Yeah, there's so many nice people out there. It's just, oh, people call, call me in off the um, fjord, um, come and have, you know, a cup of coffee and give me cake and it's beautiful. lady asked, could she take my washing home and dry it for me and bring it back the next morning? Like, you don't get that. <laughs> um, really nice people, but everywhere. Any other stories you want to share? Any particular story that sticks out at you from a, an adventure? Um, I remember ringing you from the Mur um, Murrumbidgee one night, totally exhausted, crying. Oh, what am I doing? Like I was, it was hot, and I was tired. And um, you said, "Mum, if you're not enjoying it, don't do it." And I said, "Fair enough." So I, I think I paddled another fifty k's to the next town, and that was it. Good advice. Good advice. Good <laughs> once you once you're counting the kilometres and not enjoying it, get on. Yeah, that, exactly. Yeah, it is true. Yeah, it's really true. true. But the last trip in Norway, 
So I've just I've been twice. So the first one was 120 k's, and the second one was 450 k's, which was huge. And I really mapped it out. Uh, it was a really great trip, but I got really bad weather, windy and cold, and windy, windy, windy and choppy, and um, I capsized. It was a shore dump that capsized me. I was I was landing and the little shore dump flipped me over. So a lot of stuff got wet. And, uh, it was anyway had to hang out in the middle of nowhere twice for about three days on two occasions and just wait for the wind, but, which was nice, middle of nowhere. It's usually time to think. And, yeah. and um, one day I had like um, 12 hours on the water and um, it was big. I was supposed to finish at about five. Uh, no, I was supposed to finish at about six and at about five I got to the place I was supposed to cross over, which was only a small cross to get to the camp campsite because the walls of the um, – Fjords are just, there's nowhere to stop. There's just nowhere to stop in, in sections, in big sections. It's just straight up and rock. And not, you can't even tuck yourself in a crevice on your board and sleep on your board, like it's, if it's really super windy. Anyway, I thought I got another hour, five o'clock, because daylight's pretty generous over there. Um, and it was only 700 metre crossing to get across. But by six o'clock, by the time I hit the crossing, um, the fog came in and the wind and the chop and I couldn't see 10 foot in front of me. I just couldn't see and I couldn't risk crossing over even though it was only 700 metres um, in case a boat was there. Or I thought I'd just got to keep going and I knew it was like another, I think it was about another 12 k to the next campsite. And this is 6 o'clock at night. I ended up and the wind got worse and the chop got worse and I ended up doing the last three and a half so hours on my knees and it was freezing, freezing cold and it was chop and it was wind and it was getting really dark and it was the chop was coming sideways, hitting the wall, coming back. I couldn't go out in the middle because the chop was worse out there. I just had, there was nowhere to stop, nowhere at all, and the wind was bad and the chop was bad and I just had to keep going. So I was on my knees, I thought, yeah, yeah, then I had to pass these big ships that were docked that were, still had their engines on, I had to go around them and then I finally finally got to the end and it was like midnight it was late and it was freezing and when I did stop I couldn't move my leg I was stuck in kneeling position and I remember just rolling forward on the board onto my gear and just go I'm just I was swearing to myself oh my effing legs won't move my legs won't move my legs oh and I said that 150 times and they wouldn't move it took me I reckon a good half hour to just stretch them out. And then I finally got off the board and I got to the, carried everything to the little caravan park that was there and um, it's freezing cold, freezing cold. Got to the showers and it was a shower said, you need a card to have a hot shower. And I'm like, oh my God, it's half past one in the morning, I'm freezing cold. And you wouldn't believe it. I looked on top of the box and there was a card. Someone had left it. And they had three showers in it. Oh, God. Isn't it amazing? I love stuff like that. Amazing. Yeah, I had three like... lovely hot showers in a row. <laughs> <laughs> I used them all. Amazing. But, yeah, I love that. I love stuff yeah. like that. I love when the universe lines up and, and it does. Mm. Yeah. But um, What goes through your head when you're faced with those conditions? What, what do you need to think? You obviously need to get to a point because there's nowhere else to stop. But how do you break past that mental block of thinking, oh, I could just give up here okay. or I could head back or however it was going to work. The word give up is ne never in my vocabulary, you know that. Um, I wasn't scared. I wasn't worried. I wasn't. I never doubted. I knew I was going to get there, but just when. And I wasn't – actually, I wasn't scared. I, I know I've got all my safety gear. I've got everything I need. I've got food. I've got water. I've got everything I need. And if I haven't stayed on the board all night, so what? But – I just couldn't find anywhere to tuck in. It didn't worry me. Just um, the thought of a hot shower was nice. But, um, yeah, it, I thought later when I couldn't move my legs, I thought if I, had, if I had have come off, maybe the adrenaline would have made my legs move. But, I yeah, it just worried me a bit later. I thought, oh, if I had have come off, maybe I wouldn't have been able to straighten my legs out. The best thing I bought this last Norway trip was my um, Life jacket had a um, hydration pack in the back, so that was great. So, and it had a pocket in the front. So if I came off, and it was, you know, if I got, I've got a, always got a um, belt release, quick release um, leash. Um, 
But if I'd somehow got stuck, I always had water in my backpack and I had I had a water filter in my pocket. I had food. Um, I had emergency blanket in my front pocket and I had the um, inReach, so satellite phone, always attached. I had my glasses so I could read the inReach. <laughs> That's a big thing. <laughs> yeah, but no, um, no, it's good. What do you, where do you go from, you know, you rock up the airport or you've just landed somewhere that you've, you're going to go paddle. You've got everything with you. What's your first? Do you go straight to the water? No, no, no. You've got to get your food because <laughs> you can't carry food. In. Yeah, so. Uh, oh, sim, sim to your phone. Number one, if you're if you can't roam, and um, food, yeah, and rest from your flight. You don't want to get go in the water jet lag. It's really all about safety. It's all about safety. If you plan to arrive on Thursday and paddle Saturday, and Saturday weather's not good, you can't paddle. So you've got to kind of have an open schedule, and you know. So you're going to paddle for three or four days, maybe take a week or 10 days yeah. and just yeah. be like, okay, I'll, I'll go there and then yeah. sort it out. Yeah. You obviously don't, I mean, some people might have the luxury of booking like a strike mission, say, weather looks great for the next four days, let's go here. But some people don't have the, that luxury. Mm. They'll book a trip three or four months in advance and the weather can be yeah. a bit iffy. So and also I'm yourself. solo, unassisted, unsupported. So I've really got to be careful. And I'm not as young as I used to be. <laughs> yeah. But don't let the grey hair fool you. <laughs> no, exactly. It's only on the outside I'm 61. Exactly. From all that planning for those expeditions, what are your top three things that you always pack for every expedition that you go on? Oh, um, sense of humour. <laughs> um, life jacket with the hydration pack in it, really, really great. Um, EPIRB, which is a satellite phone. And water filter. Anything else? This seems like that list could expand a little oh, bit. Oh, there's more. heaps. There's phone, and there's so much for Justin. He, if he turns up, you're in trouble. <laughs> Just in case. Just in case. Yeah, if he turns up, you want to be ready for him. <laughs> yeah. But because I travel solo, it, you've just got to be super safe. And um, so the best thing is um, something to wean in the middle of the night so you don't have to leave your tent. Well, it's good because. You don't want to be leaving that tent in the middle yeah. of the night because yeah. you're safe, you're secure, you're, and it's probably raining anyway. <laughs> you don't want to get wet, cold. Um, so that's really important. And I don't light fires when I'm by myself because it draws attention to you. And if I was with other people, I would, but yeah. Changing the subject a little bit, but you recently competed in the SUP 11 City Tour in the Netherlands, which for those of you that may not know about the 11 Cities, it is a 220-kilometre race in the Netherlands, it is a can be a non-stop event, uh, or it is also uh, done as the tour, which is two hundred twenty k's over five days. So the five day event, which Mum completed, it was tough. Can you just to elaborate a bit more? Tell us about that experience because this is your first race <laughs> ever. <laughs> I haven't even done a one k race, but I knew I could do the distance, <coughs> and I thought, well, I'm over here. Why not? So um, it was the toughest and the best, the best thing I've ever done. It was really great, exhausting, challenging, tiring, but so much fun. I just smiled every day. So well run, the best well run event ever. Um, really positive people running it, music and encouragement, happiness. It was so, and massages every afternoon. Oh, it was so good. Great food. <coughs> it was all part of the deal. Like a great event. So if you really want to challenge yourself, um, my goal was to finish the event and, of course, it's timed event. So every day you had to be at a certain spot at a certain time. Um, and I didn't want to get the tap on the shoulder, so I made that. And that was my goal. And I finished um, over um, seventh in the Grand Divas, over 50s. So I'm stoked. I'm just stoked to finish. Yeah. No, we're all super proud of you. That's an amazing achievement. I'm proud of me. <laughs> <laughs> should be proud of you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, that's amazing. So good. For but, sure. Oh, my God, my body. Oh. So I think this year was one of the hardest for weather conditions, mm. right, from what I've heard, what you've told me the as well. wind. Who would have thought a place with so many windmills had so much wind? <laughs> 45-kilometre winds with um, 
70 kilometer gusts and I got blown off with the gust twice. Sure, everyone got blown off. Oh yeah, the people um, just didn't finish the day, which I don't blame them, it was tough. And it was cold, once you're off, you're cold, you're tired. I remember stopping for lunch one, at, there's a 15 minute mandatory lunch stop and I'm, one of the organisers, I come in, I was freezing, I was like shaking and I went to grab, because they give you soup and food in that 15 minutes. And um, I went to grab the soup, my hand was like that, and I got it the other hand, and he goes, are you finished, are you finished? I go, nah. He's going, you finished? Do you want a blanket? And I thought, oh, yeah, I wouldn't mind a blanket for 10 minutes, you know. And the lady went to open up an emergency blanket. I go, no, no, no. And he's going, are you out? And he looked at me and he said, you've got 20 kilometres to paddle in three hours. Can you do it? I said, of course I can. (laughs) And he saw me that night with Mark, and um, he said said to Mark, oh, your wife. He said, I thought she was out. He said, no. She said, of course I can. And I made it. Yeah. Oh, it was tough. Anything else you'd like to add to this conversation? Um, A lot of people want to do it, and I just tell them safety, safety. Like, it's number one. And just start with an overnighter. And go with people, like really. And you've really got to know your stuff. You've got to know your water, and you've got to know you've got to know so much. You've got to know the winds. You've got to know the weather. And if um, if you're planning to go Saturday and Sunday, and the weather's not great, you can't go. You just you have to cancel. My big Norway paddle, the 450 k so I had it all mapped out and everything. But that like that day, I did the 12 hours, and I come in at midnight and I bust one with a hot shower and all that. That was huge. And um. I didn't, I didn't paddle the next section. I got on a bus because the next section was 45 k's and nowhere to stay. And if I was strong, I would have done it, but the wind was still up. And you know, if someone said to me, um, are you disappointed? And I go, how can you be disappointed? <laughs> you just paddled the most beautiful place in the world. And how can you be disappointed? I'm like, no, I won't paddle it. It's great. But um, I'm, I'm here to tell the tale. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not out to prove anything for anyone it's purely for me and if, and, and you've really got to tap into that sixth sense that's a really that's, that's a really big point I always have that sixth sense activated because you've really got to tap into it and if it doesn't feel right don't do it thanks so much for joining me thanks for having in me in my kitchen to chat yeah no, <laughs> so nice being here buddy. yeah no it's uh yeah it's been lovely to chat to you and and to pick your brain a little bit more and hopefully you all learn a lot uh, watching this video as well and inspires you to get out there do some more paddling do some sup touring just just have fun out there on the water yeah have fun know your limits be safe <laughs> safety 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 yeah i sound like a mother now <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <geez>. yeah. <laughs> but no uh, thanks very much okay. mum donna lou mother supper okay if uh people want to follow your adventures or if they want to learn more about what you've done where can they go and, and do that mother supper on facebook and yo mother supper and um, instagram i think it's mother sup dot er but i'm not sure yeah head to the facebook all people do facebook yeah (laughs) (laughs) thanks so much for watching thanks very much yeah see ya